right, well, I'm going to call the meeting to order. And all those present are reminded to stop, silence their cell phones or place them on vibrate. And um, this meeting is being recorded, and we ask if you're recording it, um, at any of it yourselves, to let us know at this time. And uh, it is Northampton Community Television that we're recording it for. And today is, I have to remember to do that, Thursday, March 14th, 2019. Okay. So, I need to write down the time. Okay. So, it looks like we have members of the public who would like to speak today. So, go right ahead. Oh, yes, and I just want to remind you that we're not going to respond to you. We're, we'll take everything under advisement. Sure. Oh. oh, I'm not here to speak. I just wanted to sit in. Okay. Oh, that's okay. And if you could that's identify nice. yourself oh. when, you, when you speak. Oh, my name is Madeline Lenz, I'm a Northampton resident. Great. Uh, my name is Joe Banis, and I'm on the East Hampton Council on Aging. And the reason I'm here is I've been asked to sort of touch base with some of the neighboring councils and watch how you guys do business. Oh. So I'm expecting to see a well-oiled machine. <laughs> Everybody hear that? Yes. <laughs> Can we come watch you? <laughs> <laughs> Have I put enough pressure on you? Or how, how are we defining what we are? <laughs> and anybody else want, want to speak? Hi, I'm Heather McLaughlin. I spoke last month. Uh, and uh, glad to be back. Uh, it seems in a month that a lot of things have happened in the TAP community and with the dance room, activity room. Um, and I'm glad to hear that there's some dialogue and some, you know, obviously some, some uh, research and dialogue. Um, we now have a room that only has a two-thirds useful dance space. And again, it's still not, for those of us who have bad knees, it's still not great service. But, Nonetheless, we didn't get moved into a, another space, so that's good. Uh, my question really is, what is the purpose of that room? I think we now have a better understanding in a month of what caused the damage. It is not three hours a week of tapping. It is dirt, chairs. And we also now have a more compliant situation with the custodian. He understands that this is dirt and it's right on the uh, in our classes today and um, no reason we couldn't have that room there no reason we couldn't have a rug outside and we've got lots of chairs we could have say that this is a room that you take your shoes off uh, most dance studios do that so my question again is to what purpose do we have the cover on, on the floor uh, my name is Eileen Goldstein uh, I have property in my hand but I'm now a uh, Williamsburg resident, and I've been a member of that class for about four and a half years. Uh, I also have a master's in dance, been dancing about 55 years. And uh, that floor has, uh, you've heard all the issues. I've done a lot of the research on the website, the source of the flooring, and uh, much of what uh, Sharon Arslanian said in the letter, and I think I'm the one who's been forwarding things to people, is um, maintenance and proper cleaning supply uh, cleaners used on wood floors that help protect them and uh, help the surface to resist scratching. I came in today and felt all the grit and found someone to come in and clean the floor. But one of the things I learned today on the website was that um, the floor has been touted as something that's going to last 18 years. It won't if it's not permanently attached in a very specific way that the website states. The, the, use, the way it's been put down now, it basically will last two or three years, or two, two, two five, four years. Um, and it was not cleaned. I was reading, again, reading the details. It needed to be washed two or three times before anyone used it with a very specific product. And I noticed today it's quite scratched. Chairs are being slid. As I said, grit is being dragged through it. Um, if we can have a daily cleaning with a proper cleaning solution, then it's not going to be marred 
by all the activities that are used in that room. And so it's more less a question and more of we've got to think about how to maintain it if you we would rather have that wood floor under us. This is a my knees which have never bothered me, bother me in that class. So uh, classroom. So first thing would be it'd be lovely if we didn't have to have it at all. But secondly if it's deemed it's going to stay, it needs to be really maintained properly, and I don't think that has been set into place. Well, I'm the Dean Texan, I'm also a member of um, Carol's TAP class for the last four or five years, and um, I assume you all have a copy of the letter from Sharon Arslanian. So, and, did you all get a letter? Did you get copies of the letter from Sharon? I didn't have everybody's email. If you can share the one I sent, those of you who have it, with the other people, because I didn't have everybody's emails. Well, let me just read to you what I think is the heart of the matter. Uh, Professor Arslanian says, the tapping that is done at the senior center is quite minimal. Three one-hour classes once a week. If there was some damage to the floor from the taps, <clears throat> that could be eliminated by making sure that all the tappers wear flat-soled shoes, which we all do, and checking that the screws are tight so that they're not protruding and scratching the floor. Otherwise, there is nothing about the tapping that damages the wood floor. So my question is, our question is, why was it felt necessary to install, at considerable expense, um, a, a vinyl covering that everyone who taps on it agrees is not nearly as good as the wood floor? We all, in fact, everyone dislikes it intensely. Uh, why was it necessary to install it if no damage was being done to the wood floor by the tapping? And I, I think that's the question we would like an answer to. What are you preserving the wood floor for? To do any voting, so I can't um, approve. We can't approve the minutes at this point. So announcements. Do we have announcements? Oh yeah, one announcement is I just received. Um, Jean Petty has resigned from the board effective today. She said so that that's an announcement. Okay, so on to old business. Yeah, this, this is left over from last time, which was that um, there was some confusion around that the meals are three dollars for people over sixty, and that they're seven for everyone else, um, and that when we have when we have intergenerational guests that will be advertised like we did for the corned beef and cabbage that friends and family were welcome to to join um, and no one actually brought any any friends or family I think like younger people there was just the one dancer who was, which was nice um, so I think that we already kind of And then the Golden Age meal tax exemption is going to take a while to get a response from them. So, but I am going to get the um, the treasurer. I found out that um, the treasurer should the treasurer has to from the city has to sign it, not the 
finance director. Not the finance director. You would think the top dog would work. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah. Well, someone considers the treasurer the top dog, apparently. Yeah, if it was the government mm -hmm. would. Exactly. DOR. Okay, and the next uh, item have we gotten any further on increasing the um, visibility of the count this council's member members in the Chronicle. Um, we talked before about having a questionnaire for the people to to answer questions and have their picture taken in the Chronicle. Has anything gone any further with that, Cindy? I, think I don't know. I haven't heard of Mike. When you last spoke, you said you would um, work on that and then send get some questions together. Or and I think you said, so no, there is no problem. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Do, do, does everyone think that everyone should answer the same questions, or do, does, do people want to sort of, I mean, some people, I guess they, we ask why. Why did you join the board? What are you hoping to bring to the, right. maybe that maybe it is sort of a standard. Right, when I sort of proposed the idea when I wrote the article, it was more like not to tell anybody what they should share or what they would write, but I forget who at the last meeting had said, um, well, they, wanted some guidance on what, like some Maybe questions. Maybe me and someone else, because I meant to make two suggestions. One is that we have some guidance so that we work all over the map. Right. And second, that we do more of a group, not meet or Yeah, not try, try to one see to one everybody to, one to, one to do it. Right. But just make a, a little bit about all of right. us rather than a lot about one person at time. You know, each time to sort of pull it together. Which would narrow down. When you're at the time, you basically say, here's right. the Constellation Advisory Board. Yeah, you know, all of us together. Yeah. What's the idea to do with a couple of times? What's the original thought was to, to space it out? Space it well, out, not, not yeah. one by one, like you said. Uh, well, two at a time, but yeah. a couple, yeah. Some kind of bunching, depending mm -hmm. on the space available That's what the it Chronicle. Was. Yeah. But then when we talked, it was like, it's totally fine to, if you can fit everybody into mm -hmm. one article. Yeah, there's not room this month anymore. Yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the deadline for the next, not this coming? April 1st for May. We're trying to. Oh, so the first of the month of the prior month for. Um, oh, yeah, because we're, we're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to just be very, very prepared for okay. the next month. Okay. I'll promise to do better and get something out. And and I promise to hound people to get stuff back. <laughs> You're good at it. I'm just wondering, if it is, I mean, can we just quickly come up with a couple of questions right now? So that you know, why, why, did you, why did you join? Why, why did you join? Yeah. Maybe one, and and then we can all just have a deadline, and we can all get it back. And does that sound all right? Rather than having yeah. to. <laughs> well, that was my original idea. Yeah, when I proposed yeah. it was, yeah. you know, why are you? Why did you? Why are you here? You know, why are you on the council? Why are you on the council? Any other questions? What do you participate in at the council? Yeah, your, your, your participation, interest. your interest and participation. For intro, you know. I mean, one of the questions that people get asked when they apply by the mayor is, you know, what what do you what skills or interests mm -hmm. do you bring? Right. Skills and interests you are. So it might be that more might be a better way to phrase it. What do you bring? Yeah, you know, well, what what are you hoping to bring, or what what are you excited about working on as part of the right. council? Yes. But what the, I, the, all, part all of these are kind of similar to melding yeah. together. But the one I was saying was actually saying, what are you participating in yeah, at, the same, at the same time? Why not? not just your, your interests. Yeah. I know. I'll just clarify. Yeah. Um, so, but Marie, you had said, what are you also, what are you hoping to, because that's also, I think it's important that are, each member may have a, mm -hmm. a vision or a hope for, that could tie in with why did they join. So. You had said, I like the way you phrased it, Marisa, what are you hoping mm -hmm. to um, help the board accomplish, or what? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're enhanced, or we're forming these working groups so people can um, influence and, and have a say about what, what they'd like to see developed here. I think we want to keep them short, yeah. too, man. This is yeah. Yeah. So just a couple of questions. Oh, no. How many yeah. like, this work is a short group. Great. Yeah. A pair of don't pair. talk over each other. A paragraph would be good if there's going to be 12, no, 
because you and I already text, so there's 10 people. Should be 10 people. Okay. All right. Okay. I went. By April 1st. April 1st. Do you want to make it sooner and then I'm happy to edit so push them all together? That'd be great. That's, yeah. I'll send out an email with a reminder date. Do, uh, not with your question. Do any question. two of you want to do it? Be the be the people for the next month? Or, so send them all. Yeah, yeah, send them all. Yeah, send them all and then whatever. All at once. Okay. Okay. All at once. So if we, we would ever need to do them. Yeah. Okay. them in. Because I thought you just said there's no room. Did you say there's no room anyway since coming month? Yeah. Did I understand? So this is going to be what we're, we're going to do it for the May ish. Right. Well, okay. So we need to have them the final copy by May. By the first. end. Of, by the end of March. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for the May issue. For the May right. issue. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it's not April Fools. Huh. You mean you mean it? <laughs> That's right. I like that. Would um, the twenty seventh of March be good? That's a Wednesday before sure. the Monday. Sound good? Is that enough time? Okay. Now the next thing, new business. Um, uh, it's one of it's something that I put on the new business, and just asking people to be aware of the volunteer opportunities that are happening here, that you can participate in as council members, because I think that's really what. Um, what we, can, we can get a real feel for what's ha what we like, what we don't like, what's happening. Pe people will give you feedback every time. People know now that I'm the chair since my photographs been in the paper. <laughs> so I get to talk to while participating to different places. But I feel that that's a good thing. And that I'd like to invite you all to pick something. Kim will have plenty of opportunities for you if, if you would like to do something volunteering here at the Senior Center as a part of the council, being part of the council. That's what this one means. And I would just piggyback on that. Um, when I volunteered to work on the... Uh, corn, beef, and cabbage. Corn, what, what day is it? St. Patrick, mm -hmm. corn, beef, and cabbage. It was really a lot of fun. Well, partly because there was music and there was food, but I was taking tickets with Mary. But a lot of people were like, you know, were like, oh, who are you? I saw him, Dennis, and I got a real chance to interact because luckily Kim put me at the ticket table, so I got to talk to a lot of people. Although my one fun job was sprinkling confetti on each of the table. I will say <laughs> Irish confetti, that was the, that was the fun part. But um, it was interesting because I said, well, we really would like to hear from you, the council members. I said, um, some of them are here today, some of them are not, but we really do want to hear. And several um, individuals said to me, really, you really do want to hear from us? I said, yeah. I said, we want to know what works for you, what doesn't, what ideas you have. I said, now, I may not be able to change something uh, that, that you tell me for whatever reason, but I still would like to, you know, would still like to know what you think. And so that was a really nice exchange because several of the people were like, um, oh, I didn't know that anybody really cared, cared about <laughs> yeah. what, what, yeah. you know, right. what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, we want and I was like, no, no, I said, uh, we really do. I said, so you're free to come up and talk to any member. And I said, um, uh, oh, please go that was it. Yeah. So that was a positive yeah. I mean, And it's not just volunteering, but like I, I actually, use the fitness center for instance i tried out one of the computer classes so things that you can that you have interest in i mean it looks like we, sh we should have had somebody that was a tapper <laughs> be in the in one of the tap classes then you, being on the board you get the actual feedback to bring back to us mm -hmm. but you know things for volunteering as well as okay. participation yeah well that, that i feel like yeah and i feel like if um if we do some assessments of things like it really helps to have people involved who actually are experiencing <laughs> the programming so that we can get you know, really um, current feedback mm -hmm. um, and, um, and also build a program that people are interested in. So. And right into Kim's report. Starting with volunteer recruitment. So I'll take that excellent segue. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, talk a little bit about volunteer recruitment. As you know, that's an ongoing uh, pursuit. We've had about 
six or so people over the past two weeks um, step forward and want to be volunteers. So I'm working with um, getting them, uh, get, getting their applications processed, getting them on board um, and in uh, positions that are good fits for them. For them. Um, certainly we are continuing to look for assistance with dispatch. Uh, we're also continuing to look for uh, some additional help with the Chronicle, um, as well as with Elder Vision and fundraising. So there are really, I think, three areas that are, are areas of focus at the moment. Uh, we do have a few new folks in the coffee shop. We do have a new volunteer that's onboarding at reception. Uh, but always always on the lookout for those those two positions as well. Um, and again, any time that you'd like to volunteer, whether it be for a special event or in one of those roles, let me know. I'd be happy to happy to assist with that. Um, also, as we were looking at volunteer uh, participant feedback, the focus groups are a way that we're doing that and help, helping to participate in not only giving us feedback and programming, but helping plan programming. Uh, so to give you an update on that, the movie committee is up and running. Um, there's eight, nine people on that committee at the moment. Um, and they're meeting monthly, and they are picking the movies that we're showing on a weekly basis. So that, that's going really well so far. And we'll continue to keep that group uh, they're looking at feedback from people who are attending those movies and, and choosing accordingly and looking at different themes and they've taken the ball and run with it so they're they're picking the movies at this point uh, also the uh, the arts and culture group is meeting uh, we're meeting once a month uh, Wednesday is the day that we identified as the best day to meet uh, but however we couldn't really find a common time that worked for everybody in the group so we're going to vary the start time of the meetings so just to give you an idea, the next couple meetings are Wednesday, April 10th, and that's going to be at 2.30. Um, and then we have May 1st at 11.30 and June 5th at 2.30. So we're just going back and forth between 11.30 and 2.30, which is going to really give everybody an opportunity to participate that would like to participate. Um, and we'll keep everybody connected via email um, on meetings that they're not able to come to. Um, some of what we talked about in the last meeting was planning some programming around historic Northampton. Um, so the history of the area, whether it be about architecture or other other areas of interest. So we're looking at uh, people that might be able to come in and do some presentations along those lines. Um, the next focus group that we're looking to start and get off the ground is really a, a, a focus group to look at welcoming, um, especially as we look at inclusivity and diversity. Um, so that's going to be the next group off the ground, and we'll be looking for people to volunteer to be a part of that with that specific area of focus. Can you say more? What do you mean? Talk about the group. You talked about well, welcoming. What do you what do you envision the group will help you sort out? It's going to really take a look at how we welcome new members. Okay, we'll that's a piece. That. That, okay. That's a piece of it. Um, that how we welcome people when there are new members coming through the door, how we welcome people when there are existing members coming through the door, <laughs> and how do we encourage people to participate who are not participating, uh, and where can we kind of do some outreach to, to bring additional people in. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that it could branch into different working groups within that one topic even, because mm -hmm. I mean, we're starting to do programming around LGBTQ, um, issues and socialization and then um, but then there's also the customer service piece so it's sort of there are many layers to inclusivity and being welcoming so. and, and, and that in enhancing that would enhance membership and re membership of recruitment and retention mm -hmm. and it sounds like that's the name of the game <laughs> and, and having people be want to be here and enjoy it and feel welcomed all around so it's interesting you're saying that because I'm dealing with a lot of the same topics I'm on the membership committee for our synagogue and we're dealing with a lot of the same topics so it's um, so we're in good company <laughs> and, and uh, thank you for even um, having it on the radar. This that was one reason why I was recruited to be here because we started talking about that a few um, years ago. It was important and so thank you for have, getting this off the ground. Yeah. Okay, so is that all from you? That's all. I'll, the, I'll close with thanking each and every volunteer that we have. Um, we are gearing up and getting ready for a volunteer recognition yeah. event. And, and formalizing the list of everyone, but we've got a, a large group of volunteers that really 
are critical and, and doing a lot of wonderful things. And so we really want to celebrate that, especially in April. Is there a date? April 10th, yeah, is the volunteer recognition. What time? Is there a time set? Yeah, we, we're sending out invitations now. So. And last year I had made a point of saying that the board needs to get invitations <laughs> also. And so I'm, I'm glad that, yeah, before your tenure, it wasn't happening. <laughs> the so and so. Right, well, all yeah. volunteers, all board members are volunteers. That's why I brought yeah. that up at yeah. the time. Okay, director's report. So I don't have a budget to show you right now. I'm working on that. Right now we're just working on um, because the classification study was done for the city. We're just working on the payroll end of that. Um, and then the tap dancing flooring, I was going to address that here um, that has been installed in the activity room. <laughs> and um, because we discovered that we could not install it in a room where there was no wood subfloor. Um, so it is going to stay where it is temporarily until um, we either uh, don't have tap dancing or we, I mean, I think it's, it's covering most of the floor. So it is more usable now than it had been before. And I, I want to say something about um, not all information that was presented was correct information. Right? That somebody's doing research after our research and coming up with that it's not the tap that ruined the floor. And there's lots of opinions. There's a lot of opinions around. about it, and, and yeah. it, it is a fact that that floor was beat up by the tap shoes for 12 years of use. And that that is a fact. I don't know why they're saying that's not a fact, but. Let's, it, yeah, it the wood floor refinishers who came and said that yeah. they had to take off quite a bit. And we of also layers of wood because of the right. amount of damage. And there's only so much you can refinish a wood floor, and then there's no wood floor anymore. Too. Mm -hmm. So that's you know that's another thing that, as as well as the janitorial services here are not at the beck and call of us at this point to come and clean a floor every time. It's just not, it never was available like that. I mean, when Bob was in the building all the time, he no, was it's always- No, it's a huge job for one person, so, so it's not, we can't- There's a lot of things that can't, you know, ideal situation that just can't be done. I just realized, I don't, in different communities it, it works differently, I know, but does the senior center have a dedicated custodian or do you share it with another? Well, we usually do, but we have not had a consistent custodian for, since I've been here. And they, because they get dispatched out of central maintenance versus they're assigned here? They're assigned to our department and they are our custodian. We had Bob for Bob 10 years. Kais was here a long yeah, time. Yeah, I didn't, he didn't was dedicated him. in the building, but since then people have come, We've had hi, had come and gone. People, people have hired, but left. they've come and gone. Oh, and then they quit, you mean? Couldn't mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, no, we, we can't, can't we get can't involved. Talk in about staffing no. issues. So, so the goal is to, the ultimate goal is to have a a dedicated custodian. Yeah, that's yes. my question, for, really. For the building. That's yeah. part of the budget. Yeah, but so we will have a yeah. dedicated so custodian. So partly it's been a hiring and staffing issue with coming and going. Yeah, and that's, I don't do the hiring yeah, 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 yeah. for custodians. It's a different department. So. But I just realized, because I know in, in, when the city where I used to work, we split custodians sometimes due to finances. Yeah, and well, that's what's happening right, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that explains part of it, right. So partly the uh, issues about um, once there is someone here full time, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to direct and control them if you notice something. But if there's no custodian in the building, what are you going to do? Well, yeah, but also I just think that the floors are going to be dirty in that, no, that I know they and do. that yeah, I don't dirty. think that the opinion, you know, that that opinion that it's the dirt on chairs that yeah. are causing all the damage is actually accurate. So. No, I wasn't actually referring to that. I was just, my question was more in general. Yeah, we'd like for the floor. Yeah. So, um, I had two questions. One was, there, so there are chairs that are on there, and, um, 
and for yoga classes and things like that, yeah, and so, assisted. And are there like you know, ways that the bottoms of those chairs can be protected so that um, they they do not I mean, just putting having. I I mean, it is true that dance floors have have a certain level of protection. And right. Probably having you know a meeting on top of it or having people walk with um, with their street shoes. I mean. It, it right. Well, so my goal is there. to not have street shoes in there. Uh -huh and to move the sewing group out of there so that um, it is not being, it's not being used for other things other than exercise and that it will be a no street shoes mm -hmm. place that will have more cleaning done. Um, because a lot of things happen where people are on the floor, um, yoga, um, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of yoga going on in Feldenkrais. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to, be a cleaner space, and and the chairs do have metal caps on the bottom. Um, so if there is dirt in the, they are rubbing together. That right. will, yeah. And so the other option is that I'm thinking that once we don't have tables and chairs being set up in there, we can have the chairs be in the hallway and bring them in as needed, but that they won't be to create a bigger space as well. That there's a lot of stuff in there that kind of makes the room less usable for bigger groups because the WISE classes are outgrowing that room and they are now going into the great room. For, yeah. Yeah, and they've had to move to another space. So, um, I mean, because it does seem as if, I mean, it does seem as if they had some credible mm -hmm. questions about, you know, if, 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 if about the floor, is it, is, if the floor isn't installed in the way that the company says, I imagine that it does have any more you know, any warranty. If we use it in, in a way that, um, and, don't, and don't use the products to clean it that um, are recommended, then I imagine that the um, warranty would be defunct. There <laughs> is know, like, no warranty. Or, 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 but even any yeah. implied warranty of like how many years it would last. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, no, I understand. We can, we can look into the product that there, I have read about that product um, and it, it I don't, I mean, in my reading of the materials, it, it seems like it will last long enough. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if we will find another tap dancing teacher after Carol retires. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see, but. Um, and I have one last question was, so the, the, email, the letter that came from Sharon R. Slayman, um, was it, to whom was it addressed? The mayor. So they sent the letter to me and to the mayor and to the chair and vice chair. And so um, really communication with the whole board is not really appropriate in, that, in, this, in this matter because it, it really should come to me and the mayor and can go to the chair. We've set up a special email for that purpose so that people who have want to commit um, communicate directly with the board and have a concern that it can be dealt with by the chair and vice chair um, because that there is just so much correspondence that goes back and forth. I mean, um, it just would become very cumbersome to try and have everyone involved in that. Um, and it, it wouldn't really be productive, frankly. So, um, so just uh, uh, before, so I just, I'm just wondering, so this is just because I know we have to vote on the, the minutes from last time, but I just would, I wanted to make sure that um, the, the things, things that are presented by the people who are coming in to speak with us, it's, it feels as if a, like the, they had handouts last time, and it feels, I mean, they were, we referred to them in the minutes, um, but it wanted to make sure that they were attached, you know, because um, it documents that are mentioned in the minutes, it feels like they ought to be. Mm -hmm. What's the ask in the letter? In the letter? Mm -hmm. We heard part of it. Mm -hmm. What's the That's ask? And are we going to keep on getting? Oh, we're going to. Yeah. You know, what, what is sure the we'll ask? Getting, can we ask? What is the answer mm -hmm. that says this is the answer? I mean, today right. what I heard from you, which makes sense to me, you're transitioning that room to be a no shoe, yeah. no street shoe, exercise dance room, yeah. but should and that that's the ultimate goal. The the dance floor is here to stay. 
Right. Not going anywhere. We're not going to purchase um, those kind store. of things. How do we communicate that back in a nice? But this is this is the state of what's going on here. Well, we have been communicating back, and, and that's obviously still right. I mean, there are many layers of conversation going on, sure. and lots of you know ideas and opinions, and um, we cannot take everyone's opinion into consideration. We've done due diligence, we've done the research, we've talked to the company, we we cannot purchase a subfloor to put it in another room. We so it's, yeah, it's are protecting the, been made. the yeah, wood yeah. floor and it's been made, but I, that seems to not be that clear. That didn't feel to me like that, it, it felt to me that the people who came today had, had already had assumed that the decision was made, but that they were trying to optimize the situation by saying, you know, that that the, in order to make that, that in order to preserve the floor, and that in order to make sure that they were not uh, they, that they weren't um, given blame for damage to the floor, yeah. that as long as you were putting people were walking in there with street shoes on, and as long as there was activities going on in there in which there was furniture being put on the dance floor, that 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 wasn't that it was that the first person said what was what is the purpose of the room, and I think that part of what even though I know they're not happy, but I think that part of what they were trying to say was, um, you know, if you're going to put the dance floor in that room, and we don't love this dance floor, but like let's like make the best of it by not having this be a multi-purpose room that's at cross purposes with um, keeping the floor um, as as yep. intact as and possible. And I, they, I don't know if they all know that that is the plan. Um, I don't. I mean, I have, I have communicated these things. Um, and we can't control their internal communication. No, and and um, right. But Eileen Goldstein, I mean, she when she's at least one the notes that I have written down, it seemed as if she had, like she's kind of stated that she understood that it was a, a done deal, but you know, could but that there were ways to mm -hmm. install it and, and products to use to go yeah. and keep it. Up. And that feels reasonable. Yeah. Right, but we can't we can't install install it. I mean, we did install it the way that it was instructed to install it in a temporary fashion. Uh, installing it permanently uh, wall to wall, um, I'm not sure that we will do that because, uh, you know, my intention was to have the wood floor be for all the other uses and have the tap flooring be moved elsewhere. Originally, we were going to put the tap floor down for each Thursday. Uh, but it is really too cumbersome to do that. But that is what tap dancing groups do when they go to another place to dance, is they roll out their flooring. Um, they bring their flooring with them, uh, because most places won't let you dance on their wood flooring. So um, we, we did our research. Um, but you know I think that um, we, we can look into the products that are used on that kind of Sounds like that, and, and you know, street shoes can ultimately help. And at the end of the day, this is a multi-purpose place, and it's there's neither the time nor the money, right, physical space to fully dedicate a single room to dance only. Yes, and I think even in a dance studio, you wouldn't get that because there would be different kinds of uses going on sure. in a dance studio yeah, too. Make the best of the situation. Maybe there would be no street shoes, but right, we have answered. All the people that have emailed us, whether it be the director or the mayor or whatever, we've answered them and, and basically told them what the truth, you know. And, and it's not, you know, it's hard for us to answer every point that somebody has because everybody has a different point. Like, for instance, the refinishing and the not responsibility, that kind of stuff. But that was addressed before already, and that those people didn't get it. That it was, you know, a three thousand dollar cost and that the floor can't be scraped repeatedly every few years. So anyway, it's just And they were going to have to refinish it more than every 10 years, that it just didn't get done until now. But it, it really... It be clean more often. Might be able to... It is clean. cleaned. Yeah. So I don't know what they were... Well, I, I, I guess my concern is that, and it sounds like my concerns have been that people are being responded to. As I said earlier, we can't control 
who gets what pieces of information and what they choose to do with them. Yeah. And hopefully we're not going to be here three months from now. Sure. Yes. And still have the same questions coming, but we very well could be. Right. Yes. I, I thought that was a great idea to make it a shoe free, uh, an outdoor shoe free room. And so I was just wondering, is that maybe there's already signs up around that or is that something we know because we help? haven't we so haven't in that wait i i just want to spit out my question how soon is it realistic to kind of begin implementing that so there's reinforcing it there are a lot of other issues that i need to deal with in order to get the people who are in that room into another room so no shoe free when I, I have gotten benches, we are, it is something I'm working on continuously and everything always takes longer than you want it to. So um, we will, we'll get there. So it's there's just, steps there are storage involved. issues in another room for the sewing group that I need to deal with so that I can move them to a place that's adequate for their needs so that we don't have them here upset. Yeah. So, you know, I'm trying to keep everybody happy, yep. but it's it's not easy. And also trying to keep people shoe free. I, I work out at the fitness center and yeah. you're not supposed to have, mm -hmm. you know, outdoor shoes in that, in that, mm -hmm. and it's, it, you know, the, the floor yeah. has, it has dirt on it because it's just what happens. But it's supposed to be basically a outside shoe free mm -hmm. space. It's not. It's not easy. And trying to course. monitor everybody that walks in. Yeah. Check the bottom of their feet. Yeah. Or if they're wearing shoes. Oh, yeah, you know, if they're oh wearing my. shoes and, and, and uh, just between us here and, and the film, someone <laughs> came in there in tap shoes and worked out since I, when I was there. You know, so it's like, so how do you stop oh people, you know, from, from doing that, you know? Well, I so, don't think bare feet is a safety issue or the slippers. We can and have some socks so can get caught in things. A person could say, you no, know, like they have signs, no shoes, no service oh. right so, but yeah everybody wants what they want yes and they don't have the staff to, to who knew we it. needed a shoe constable <laughs> well okay. it's your opportunity <laughs> 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 all right how about on to staffing changes um yes yeah, so we are um we are going to be hiring another marketing coordinator because we don't have a um, media and marketing coordinator. Um, currently, that position is open. Um, and the next thing is um, for tonight, I don't have cultural arts funding. So we, um, I applied for cultural arts funding in the fall and um, got funding for the art salon to come here in April, so we will have um, the Art Salon, which is a group of artists that coordinate shows um, around the region, and they basically a, a you know four to six different artists will come and do a slideshow about their work and talk about their work. And so this will be our third, I think, Arts Night Out, and it's you know been sort of slowly building, but I think this will really help us launch into being. Um, on the on people's radar about being an art side out spot, um, and at the same time we will also have a um, Laura Radwell, um, who's a pretty well known painter, will be um, displaying in the hallway gallery as well. Um, so I'm excited about that, and um, our volunteer work commission event is coming up in April, and then um, in in April I guess I didn't put that on here, but um, we'll be doing, um, Western Mass Pollinators will be doing a, a workshop here around us becoming a site for part of the pollinator pathway that's being built throughout Northampton to try and um, support pollinator friendly environments. And then we're also going to be doing some age friendly and dementia friendly um, stuff in April. April. Yeah, we're doing it in April. April. Actually, and she asked people to say the date. Yes, the was it April? April twenty third. April twenty third. It's going to be the official launch of the age friendly piece in one clock. Was it three thirty? One to three thirty. Yeah, with the mayor here. The mayor, the um, state director from ARP, coming out to officially designate. And it's a Tuesday. 
and um, combined with a the first listening session. So basically, doing some be doing some wide publicity. Older adults, younger adults, really looking sort of an hour of brainstorming. How to, I envision Northampton as a place to age well, and just to sort of kick off the notion of getting some input. Yeah, so that's exciting. And I think I think that was those are the main things that are coming up that we're sort of doing a lot of planning at the last minute here, but we're going to pull it together. So um. okay, anything else you need to bring up? So can I just ask? I'm sorry, not to raise my hand, but I feel like we're a smaller group. Um, you said in passing the, the wide classes have gotten so big they've had to move, so that's good news, right? Yeah, the one in the morning, Tuesday, Thursday, um, yeah, they're, it's gotten too tight in, in the activity room, so they are now in the great room, um, in half the great room. Um, and the evening classes are getting more, you know, there's about nine people doing dance and sculpt, I think. Um, yeah, and so I think, you know, the word's getting out, like the people are. I bet as the warmer weather stays, it might sort of the evening classes might pick up as well. Right. Yeah, and you know, we're the pilot, uh, there are a lot of people coming. You know, there's sometimes like up to fifteen people here on Saturday mornings doing in the in the gym, and then there are people coming for yoga. Um, so, you know, it's 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 going well and I think that the people who are working are starting to realize that that we are open for them um, for our pilot hours. Um, and the memberships have really increased as well, we've noticed. So, yeah, a lot of good things. And um, also, the sink went into the new art studio, the old library conversion. Yeah, so we'll be um, adding a lot more art classes coming every month, adding more and more. So, there's a lot, a lot going on. So much going on that when city departments want to have meetings here, I often have to say no <laughs> because we don't have any space. <laughs> How can we be too small That's already? <laughs> <laughs> that so, is good, yeah. But that means we're doing our we're doing our job. Yeah, it's good news. Yeah. So. How, where did the funding for the sink come from? Um, the activity fund. So. That's great. Yeah. And that was one of the issues from the corned beef and cabbage where the lady wanted to know what happened to the porcelain sink. The porcelain sink. That used to be in the room because in the now, library? There, now there's an ugly stainless steel sink. There wasn't a sink. There was there. never a porcelain sink in the library. I've never heard stainless steel, period. I don't know. Well, I said, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I said, but I noticed <laughs> that. And then she answered her own question because then she said, well, I think our classes are going in there. I said, oh, I think then they need a big sink. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so um, that's all I can think of right now. So, um, what, Deborah passed me a note about the that Elder Vision, when we met last, voted to um, fund because the city um, capital improvement request I made for outdoor furniture was not funded. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it doesn't mean it wouldn't be funded in the future, but I don't really want to wait, so I asked or vision, um, and they designated five thousand dollars for that purpose. Well, for out, this for out there. Yeah, okay. so I think we'll do some visioning around the use of the space, but also for outside, yeah, along the yeah. the in, you know the interior of the driveway. Um, Portico kind of area. Yeah. yeah, so that people can have lunch outside and the cards. So, so that means the weather's going to get warmer, huh? Okay, well, if anybody doesn't have anything else, I think we can be adjourned. I don't think I can, we can vote on it though. No, we can Would you like to be? <laughs> I think I can, I take it, can we take advantage of having East Hampton with us? Put sure. you on the spot, sir? Sure. <laughs> um, are we a well old machine, first of all? And second, you know, <laughs> that was a facetious question. Um, are we similar to how your own group is meeting or? Different or? Well, I, I'm not sure that this, I, and you can tell me if this is typical of the way your meetings progress or, I mean, the fact that you didn't have a quorum 
I mean, I can see there might be less formality as far as taking votes and calling calling votes on things. I, if, if we usually do have a quorum, this is the first time I've been part of it. So we usually I, have a I think everybody's the whole sitting table's in the sun. filled. <laughs> I guess I'm. I, you know, and I, I don't mean to hijack your meeting for my own purpose, but I, I'm curious, sir, what are the main, the major issues that you guys see facing seniors in in Northampton? I mean, obviously money is, is probably one thing, but, you know, what are what are the big, big things that, that challenges that you see coming up down the road? Making everybody happy at the same time. <laughs> I think there's it, yeah. it, issues facing older adults, and there's issues that we get to deal with. You know, affordable housing, affordable transportation; those things are not going to happen on out of this group. But I think that's probably universal with sure. what you guys are experiencing at East Hampton. Mm -hmm. I think what you, what you guys are saying earlier about just activities and the use of this space to manage and meet everyone's needs. Sure. I mean, do you guys do, is the mayor actively? In, well, I mean, he's not actively involved except to the extent that people send him emails or... Sort of. <laughs> uh, well, we're, I mean, we're a counseling body, so we don't make policy here at all. Right. We, we offer um, our ideas and comments and everything to the director and assistant director, and they, they along with the mayor, make the decisions. Sure, so, so basically you're in an advisory role advisory as opposed role. to... Which is, I'm sure you are too, right? Yeah, same, yeah. same here. In but I mean, there's the issues, like you were saying, between the elder population in general, the city which we don't address mm -hmm. and then the senior center so the main issues I would think that we've been hearing from the director and the assistant director and other is things like programming part of our, us as ambassadors about when the chair was suggesting what go to events or like when I volunteered to say this is what people talk to is what programming do they want do they like the programming that there is what mm -hmm. programming would they like to see uh, staff has been working on expanding hours for the working people who up until not too long ago I was working and could never be here because I was working sure. 50, 60 hours a week. But they didn't have night hours, they didn't have Saturday hours. So partly is finding the money to expand the programming and the hours so that you can serve more elders who come from a broad spectrum of demographics and who are working and not working and then the other piece is doing outreach between other <coughs> communities how do you create diversity what does diversity mean if if i can ask about that there's you guys have a program called northampton friends northampton northampton neighbors. 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 Yeah. neighbors okay that's that's what i meant and that's sort of a, a program that helps you it's That's an independent organization. It's an independent. It's a, their own 501c3. Okay. And um, it's, but you can answer. There, well, there's been a partnership here that they were, they were, you know, basically building the organization and were, there was a collaboration going on. And so they are, they're now, you know, sort of ready to launch into their own space and, and are, you know, they have many, many members. And so there'll be a lot of collaboration going forward also but they are they are their own entity it's a, um, and a, a separate legal so i mean part of part of the thing i would imagine is you know you may be in a position of having the, more groups to partner with or more stakeholders or, well yeah i mean i think that there's always the need to share resources and to partner around creating more resources and filling gaps so um and the the things that are address broader issues that affect older people in the city are being addressed through initiatives that we're doing sort of the age friendly and dementia friendly initiative and the planning office um, there's a lot of things that um, that I work on and, and involved in being a, a voice in city projects that where I'm asked to bring the view of the seniors needs sure. up to the table so it's not that we are not working on those things it's just not part of um, the council meeting but a lot of the board members are involved in those conversations and in those projects so there was something also that you mentioned today is just asking people you know, or I don't know if it's an, a norm you know that that people you 
council members be involved or come and participate in senior center activities? I think I think well? it's kind of a uh, a common issue in senior centers is that the the advisory board is often made up of a mix of people. So some of those people may not actually participate in um, in programming at the center and may be involved more on a an extension of their professional lives. Sure. Um, in Williamsburg, before I came here, a lot of the board members um, would only come and meet in the office to then go out to lunch together. They didn't they didn't really participate in the programming, um, but they were the elders of the community. So you know, it just having that diversity of people who are working, people who are involved, people who are um, taking care of a, a spouse or a loved one. You know, I think that you just you have the voices of all the different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. and that's what's important. But but we do want to hear from people who, um, you know, not just council members, but we're, these working groups we're trying to put together is to have council members, part, participants, um, staff, volunteers, all bringing voice to like what what are we what can we do better? You know what's working? Sure. What what kind of programming would bring more men here or more? Um, working people here. I, I must be candid that I, I noticed the, the demographic on, on that. I well, mean, that's sort of universal, yeah. I think. Um, you mean at senior centers? Yes. yes. We die younger. <laughs> and also just in the population. But yeah, I mean, uh, I had a board member in Williamsburg say, you know, I, I don't come to a lot of things because I'm surrounded by women all the time then. <laughs> <laughs> so we created a men's group. And, and so, you know, I think that we're, we're trying to create programming that that serves all the different uh, groups. Tracks, yeah. yeah. Those groups. I think, you know, I, was, I think it's trying to remain, be and remain relevant to people who over, are over the age of 60, and it's multiple generations, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not all, one size is definitely not fit all. So mm -hmm. I think all of what we heard is about relevance, what people want, being responsive to it. Sure. And also, I guess yeah. you utilization of the right. space, you, you could yeah. hear it that. It, it was Patty was the director when we moved to this building, mm -hmm. and things were building up. And then when Linda came in, it started to like let's look. We had committees. Let's look at using the space as fully as possible. And it's continuing, and and the population coming into the building has increased. Mm -hmm. So could could you what percentage of you know? And I mean, I guess in, in maybe round numbers of the the population of Northampton and the populate or the number of seniors. I mean, is it like 20% or? Uh, about 20. Yeah. It's about 20? And it's been that way forever. That, that percentage of the total yeah. population has remained pretty constant. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and there's 35,000 residents, or roughly. 29. 29? Yeah. And, I, and I think it's going to get closer to 25%. Yeah. It's always hovered in the 20%. Because you need to share one of the things about East Hampton, we have a lot of, the senior population seems to be maybe a little bit, percentage-wise, a little bit more. And one of the challenges for a lot of our seniors are, you know, they're, I guess, to, they're, house, they're house rich but income poor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they want to stay in their homes and if, and apparently when they have to move, there is no, other senior housing in East Stampton and many of them, I've heard a lot of them are going to Westfield. Uh, but it's, you know, the question for us is, you know, what can, what can the, the Council on Aging in East Stampton do to try to help people stay in their houses as long as they can? And so it's like the, like the Northampton Neighbors program that, that we mentioned before, you know, we're looking at trying to set up a comparable program, you know, how can we help people to, to stay in their houses? And then the other issue is, you know, how do you get developers to, to build Best. senior housing when so many developers want to put up big single family like mansions, if you will? I think that's the case here too. It's not, and that's pretty universal. Right. I think that happened up at Hospital Hill, that yeah. they were saying they were going to build affordable houses. And, I, you know, I've read articles or to editor in the paper that these aren't affordable yeah. you know the affordable, affordable ones are not affordable mm -hmm. yeah. so that's unfortunate that's half a million enjoy. dollars is affordable to somebody but it's not <laughs> right. not normal that's, that's pretty reality. universal people often they need they need the profits the proceeds from the sale of the house to have money 
and that's going to price you out of any subsidized housing with that, but there's nothing that's in that gray area. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't actually afford But thanks for okay. coming to do something with us. Thank no, I mean, I, I'm, thank you for, you know, you know, I, I know you were having your meeting and, and <laughs> you didn't want, you know. No, but you came all this way to so I want to just well, thank, thank you for. And you challenged us to be on our best behavior, so we had Well, I, I didn't mean to intimidate. And it was a bad date because normally <laughs> we have a full council meeting yeah. and, and a, it's a larger fun. agenda, and yeah, yeah, so it was some of those serendipitous. I can always come back. Yeah. To yeah. yeah. see if we're actually talking the truth. Right. Thank, thank you, folks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.